Today, I'm sharing with you tools that make cooking easier. A few weeks ago, I published the video, The Five Baking Essentials That Make Life Easier, but this video is different in that I am taking you through every cabinet drawer and even my garage to share with you the tools I have curated over the last 10, or if you really wanna date me, the last 20 years in my kitchen. I do want to preface that to make homemade, healthy, scratch-made food for your family, you really don't need that much. So if it's not in your interest or if it's not in your budget, don't feel like you have to have these things to make really high quality and delicious food for your family. I have been trying different tools and curating different tools for a really long time. So it's not like I just bought all these things at one time. So this has been a work in progress for a long time and it can be for you too if that's what works. In the description box below, I have links for just about every product in this video. They are affiliate links, so if you use them, you are helping support my small business and helping me provide more free content for you, so thank you for supporting my content. But even if you don't want to purchase them, you can just check them out and use this video really as a resource for research to see what would work and what wouldn't in your kitchen. So with that in mind, let's get going. Other than the kitchen island, I probably spend most of my time by the stove. So I like to keep my essentials over there in the corner and I keep this little salt container right next to the stove so I can add seasoning to my food while I'm cooking without having to run to the pantry. I keep coarse kosher salt in it and I prefer this over a pinch pot because I don't like putting my hands in a pinch pot and what I really like about this is I know for sure that one level spoonful is about a teaspoon of salt so it's a little bit easier for me to measure and keep track of how much salt I'm actually putting in my food because I know how much that spoon holds for as say a pinch pot it's a little bit of a guessing game. Inside of my utensil crock I have a ton of stuff. All of it I use, but some of it I use more than others. These five tools are the ones I use the most every single day while I am cooking. This is a fish turner. I think it's the most underrated cooking utensil out there. It's essentially like any other turner, but it's long and it's thin, and it makes turning your food a lot easier than a traditional turner. This is my very old silicone brush that has been through it. It's been in the dishwasher a million times and has survived the test of time. But I use this just about every day for brushing on oil to my pans or even onto my food. This is one of the two Danish dough whisks that I keep around. I just talked about these in a recent video about my five baking essentials. You can check that out in the description box below, but that's pretty critical for making sourdough bread, which I do every week. And you probably already have silicone spatulas, but I do find it helpful to keep more than one around. I find that whenever I'm baking, I just really need a few silicone spatulas. And then of course a whisk. This is an all clad whisk and I've had a lot of whisks over the years and I have found that if you don't invest in a good one, it will break. I have spent more in cheap whisks than I have just buying one good whisk. So I definitely recommend just getting a good one if you can afford it. Now you probably notice I have these pot holders hanging. It's because there is a phone jack in 2024 in the middle of my kitchen. I don't know why the builders did that. So they are there for aesthetics, but in front of that I have my new KitchenAid stand mixer. This is the seven quart KitchenAid professional stand mixer with the bowl lift in the color milkshake. I have color commitment problems. I like this color because it is a little white. It's a little bit of gray. I think it's more like a grayish color. So I like that, but I also like that it has more increments for the speeds and the accessories that came with it were a lot nicer than the accessories that came with my past KitchenAid, which was an artisan. Not only does it come with dishwasher safe coated accessories, but the mixer itself also has more incremental speeds, which allows you to have a little more control over your mixing. And then inside of this basket is where I keep all of my accessories, including the bread art stencils that I do design, make, and sell on my website, moonandmagnolia.com. You can check them out in the description box below. You just put them right on top of your bread before baking. Use a powder shaker like this one that is rice flour in that one. Sprinkle it on top, rub it in, and then bake it and you have really easy bread art. Now for rolling pins, I have two that I use. So this one, I actually don't really use a whole lot. I just use this to measure the thickness of my dough because the little circles do come off and each one has its own measurement. It'll tell you how thick your dough is. But for actually rolling the dough, I like to use a French rolling pin because it's a little easier to hold. You can get better pressure and you have more control over rolling your dough. For baking bread, I have a couple of different tools that I use for that. So this little yellow ceramic bread pan 
It's not that special. It doesn't do anything fancy. I've just had it for like, I think probably 25 years and it has stood the test of time and it's just a little sentimental so I like to use it. But my favorite is actually a Pampered Chef stoneware bread pan. I really love stoneware. I do think Pampered Chef has the best stoneware so that's the one I like to use. My favorite measuring cups and spoons are from Williams Sonoma. So these actually come in odd sizes. So the measuring cups, for example, start all the way at a 16th of a cup and goes up to one and a half cups, which makes measuring just a little bit easier sometimes. But like the whisk, I do recommend, if possible, investing in good measuring cups and measuring spoons because they will last a lot longer. I have had cheaper ones. They worked for sure, but eventually in the dishwasher, they just didn't hold up, but these are really great. Now inside this drawer, I also use these five tools all of the time. This is a little pampered chef scraper that came with one of my purchases. I use that for cleaning cast iron. I also use my bench scraper all the time for cutting my dough, picking up dough. This is a grater that I really like to use for zesting citrus or even mincing garlic. You can put it right on top of your bowl and rub the food on top and it just goes right into your dish and a garlic press. Not all garlic presses are alike or even good. This is the best one I have had. You do not need to peel the garlic to put it in there. You just put the garlic in there, press it, and it comes out on the other side. And then a good set of tongs goes a long way. So these are old, not really my favorite color, but I like that it has the little rest on it for the counter to keep things clean. I also like to keep a few pretty serving spoons on hand. And then inside this drawer, I also have a knife sharpener. A sharp knife is essential in a cook's kitchen. So speaking of knives, over here next to the stove, I do keep all of my knives. I'm gonna be very honest, I only use about four out of all of those knives. My husband does all the knife sharpening for me. That's not really in my wheelhouse or my skill set, but chopping food is. This is my number one favorite knife. I think it's called a Santoku knife and I use it all of the time. A bread knife is essential in my house because I make sourdough bread all the time and a serrated knife is what I like to use to cut bread. I also use a tomato knife semi-regularly. I really use this mostly in the summer when I'm growing tomatoes and then I do have a larger knife that I use if I need to cut something like a squash or if I'm trying to slice up meat. A digital meat thermometer is something I actually made fun of for a long time. I was like, why do you need a meat thermometer until my husband got me one and now I use it every single day to ensure that everything is cooked through. And I like this one in particular because it has a magnet. So I just stick it on the side of the fridge right next to the stove and it's really easy for me to use. I also like to use this fry thermometer for when I am making fried chicken or anything else that's deep fried, which I don't do a lot. But when I do, I like to use it because it's important that your oil is hot enough. I love cooking in enameled cast iron. I have a full YouTube video that compares my Dutch ovens. You can check that out in the description box below, but these are the two that I use the most, a seven quart Cuisinart and a five and a half quart stove Dutch oven. I kind of use these interchangeably. It depends on what I'm making that day, which size would be better, but I really like both of these, but I do think the stove is a little bit better. This is another piece of Pampered Chef stoneware, and this is the baking sheet. I love this thing. I use it for sheet pan dinners. I use it for roasting vegetables. It works best if you preheat it and then you put your food on it, and it gives you a really nice sear. Now, in terms of regular cast iron, I have two that I use the most. I recently published a blog and a YouTube video about how to care for cast iron, so I'll leave links for those in the description box below, but this is my 15-inch Lodge cast iron skillet that I use for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you've been watching on YouTube, you see me use it all of the time. And then this on the left is my Lodge Dutch oven that I use for baking sourdough bread. It doubles as a dual cooker, so you can use the lid as a skillet and you can use the bottom as a Dutch oven. This is a great tool if you are looking for versatile versatility in your kitchen. I keep this cookie sheet in my oven and it helps prevent the bottom of my sourdough from burning because it disperses the heat. So it's pretty essential, but I don't actually use it a lot. Now in the cabinet to the left of the microwave over the stove, I have this little organizer for all of the lids for my glass containers. And this thing is a lifesaver. I don't know why it's so hard to keep lids organized, but that has been the best solution I have found so far. In that cabinet, I also keep a set of mixing bowls. There's actually three, one was just in the dishwasher. These are my favorite because they have a rubber bottom. So they're really easy to keep on the counter and mix in and whisk in without it sliding all over the place because it's grippy on the bottom. These don't come with lids, so they're not great for food storage, but they are by far my favorite mixing bowls I've ever had. I store a lot of food in mason jars, so I like to use these reusable lids because you don't have to worry about them rusting like you do the metal ones. 
I used to have white ones, but I have not been able to find them on Amazon recently. So I'm not sure if they still make them, but of course the gray ones work just fine. We are not a paper towel free household, but we are close. And I like to keep a ton of microfiber towels underneath the sink for cleaning. So I make my own countertop cleaner. I just started doing that recently and I keep it in this glass spray bottle and I keep everything under the counter together. And then I just use them to clean my kitchen. It saves so much money to not use paper towels and make your own cleaner. I also have a ton of kitchen towels and a lot of them are really gross and dirty and probably need to be uh, recycled. But I do like to keep some nice ones on hand because it just makes things feel nicer in the kitchen and a little more beautiful. Going back to cooking, there are some non-cast iron tools I really like to use. So these are some all-clad pans that I actually found at Home Goods. So this is an all-clad skillet and an all-clad sauce pot. This is the D5, which means it has five layers. It has a rounded edge for pouring. And what I really like too is it has this really long handle, which is helpful when you have a gas stove like I do because those handles can get really hot. These are by far the best pieces of stainless steel cookware I've ever had. And if it is in your budget, I do recommend investing in really good cookware because it will last you a lifetime and it does cook better for sure. Now I also have some pieces of cookware that are not all clad that are a little cheaper that I do like. On the right is one of two stock pots that I have and on the left is a Cafflon pan that I really like to use for sauteing. I have a lot of coffee mugs, but these are my favorite. The little heart one here, it's not my favorite aesthetically, but it is the most comfortable to hold. And then I also have some that I really like. This one's actually just from Target, and I just think this is a pretty one, and I like the way it looks. And then actually a friend made this coffee mug for me, so I like to use this one pretty regularly too. I love starting my day with delicious coffee in a beautiful mug. I feel like it makes a huge difference. Now I make my coffee every day in my Breville Barista Pro. Using this does take a little practice, but once you figure it out, it is truly the best coffee you will ever have. I use a few accessories like this dosing cup. This just keeps things a little bit cleaner when you are grinding the coffee rather than putting it right into the porta filter. And then I also like to use this weighted tamper. So one side you use to smooth the coffee over, the other side you use to actually press the coffee down into the porta filter. So you can see here, you would spin it and that smooths the coffee on top and then you flip it over and press it down and that packs the coffee into the porta filter. And of course, a carafe for frothing milk. Now, most mornings I do drink an Americano because I'm just too sleepy to froth milk, but I do like a good latte. And for my lattes, I like to use coffee art stencils. I also design, make, and sell these at moonandmagnolia.com. So you put these right on top of a latte, sprinkle with cinnamon or cocoa, and it leaves art right on your coffee. I like to keep these coffee art stencils in the container that my husband actually designed and 3D printed right on top of my machine. So when I'm ready for a latte and I want to stencil it, it's right there. I keep the Breville knock pot tucked away next to the machine. And this is just a container for your espresso pucks after you have made your coffee. You just knock it right in there and it stores it. And I just put it in the compost when it's ready. And then behind the coffee maker, I keep extra coffee. So it's there when I need it. This is my to-go coffee container for my Americanos. They tend to be smaller than a regular percolated coffee. So this glass container is perfect when I need to take my girl to preschool, but I want to have a cup of coffee with me. I also am a huge fan of a wood cutting board. This cutting board was actually handmade by my husband's coworker and it really needs to be oiled. And this is the oil I like to use for my cutting board. So you just drizzle it on there. And then I use a paper towel for this. Like I said, we're not totally paper towel free around here and rub the oil in. This is an end grain cutting board, which means it's a little bit better on your knives and it stays a little bit cleaner than other wood cutting boards. And I would recommend investing in a high quality end grain cutting board. I'll leave the link in the description box below for this cutting board and you can grab one there. Now I do have some plastic cutting boards that I use because sometimes I don't feel like washing things by hand, but I just heard recently about how much plastic gets in your food from these, so I might stop using that. This is my cooling rack that I love. It is a three tier stackable cooling rack that you can use for basically cooling anything, breads, cookies, whatever it is you're baking. And you can stack it and it works out perfectly and it's foldable, so it's easy for storage. This is my Cuisin Art Immersion Blender, which I love for blending up soups because I don't like to blend up soups 
use in a regular blender because it's just a pain. So the immersion blender is good for that. I will be honest, I don't use my food processor all of the time, but I do use it enough to keep one on hand. I prefer this one because it's smaller and compact. So for someone like me who doesn't use a food processor all the time, that's pretty helpful. The Brood & Taylor Proofing Box is a game changer for making sourdough bread regularly. I have a full Brood & Taylor Proofing Box review on my website. That link is in the description box below. You just put your dough right inside of it, set the temperature, you can add a little tray for water, and then your dough will proof as fast or as slow as you want it to based upon the temperature that you set the proofing box to. Let's talk food preservation. This is my food saver that I use for vacuum sealing foods. And then this is my handheld vacuum sealer that I use for sealing jars. So the food saver, you probably already know how to use, but the handheld vacuum sealer is a little bit different. So you put the metal lid on the jar, you put this plastic lid on top of that, and then you use this pump to pull the air out of the jar. So that would be really good for freeze dried foods, for example. During food preservation season, I use both a pressure canner and a water bath canner. I don't have a fancy version of either, but they both get the job done. So the pressure canner I use for low acid foods and the water bath canner I use for high acid foods. For fermentation, I am using these pickle pipes made by Mason Top. So you just put them in just where you would the regular canning lid and it lets the fermentation gases out. And then these are actually glass weights for fermentation. It just holds the vegetables underneath of the brine. But I will say I have used a variety of very random kitchen tools for those jobs. So they aren't necessarily required, but they definitely help. For food preservation, I also use my Harvest Right freeze dryer. So this, unlike a dehydrator, does not cook your food. It actually removes the water from it, keeping it in a raw state. And to store properly, the freeze dried food can stay good for up to 20 or even 25 years, which is pretty magical if you ask me. And I do have a food dehydrator that I like to use. This is the Kasori Cabinet Dehydrator. And I like this because it has these shelves that slide in and the heat comes from the back rather than the bottom. So that way you get a more even dehydration from your food. Also for food preservation, you definitely will need a funnel. I just have a cheap funnel that I like to use. And then I also have this herb saver. So you put water in the spout in the back you open the front and put your fresh herbs inside and then you stick it in the fridge and you have fresh herbs that last for about two weeks in there. It's pretty impressive actually. For making milk kefir, I really like these lids from Mason Tops. They are strainer lids that you can use to strain your grains in the liquid. But what I like is they have an open position for ventilation and then they also have a closed position for storage. So that way when you've strained the grains, you can just close it and put it right in the fridge for later use. I also have a three set of sieves that I really like, and I use those for milk kefir sometimes. And this is actually like a little fry scoop, but I use it my milk kefir grains are big. Of course, these things I use for all sorts of different projects, but I like to keep them in my cabinet on a hook so that way they're organized and I know exactly where they are. I also have a few things for my kitchen that aren't necessarily for cooking, but that do make things a lot easier. And one of them is this over the sink drying rack. So you can put your food right on there and rinse it. You can wash your dishes and put them on there to dry. And really it extends your countertop space. I set things on there all the time when I don't have room on my counter. And if you need to move it, you can just roll it right out of the way. Plus the one I have has a little pocket for your sponges. Now, a new thing that I got is an Echo. And I know this might not seem like a cooking tool, but this has been one of the most useful things I've added to my kitchen because I can put my grocery list on it. I can keep my calendar organized. I have it right next to my pantry so I can see what's going on all day, every day. And Alexa reminds me of these things. And on top of that, you can add art to it. So it adds a little bit of aesthetic to your space. My daughter really loves to play with this thing too. So it's made the kitchen fun for her. Of all the things I have purchased from my kitchen over the years, my daughter's toddler tower is probably the thing that gets the most use. She has been in this thing every day since she was about one year old and she loves to be at the counter. She eats there. She helps me cook. We play music and have a great time. And of all the things I have, this is my favorite because I get to spend time with her and make really beautiful memories with her in the kitchen. I hope you have found this video helpful and useful and I hope it has inspired you to find tools that make your life in the kitchen not just a little easier but also a little more beautiful. Don't forget the links for most of these products is in the description box below and as always thank you so much for tuning into Moon and Magnolia's YouTube channel where we elevate the everyday from scratch and at home and I'll see you again next time.